Hey, what's going on everybody? So it's been a couple weeks since I did some videos. Um, I had COVID and then one of my colleagues at work uh, left for the month and I had to cover him. So it was just busy, but we are back on schedule. Um, I am nearing the end of fluid mechanics. I'm not gonna go into the turbines yet, maybe later, but um, I wanna start doing FEA because I'm taking my master's next semester and it's going to be towards FEA, so I want to get practice on it, make sure I'm good. But 5.51, this one reads, a vertical circular cross-sectional jet of air strikes a conical deflector. Um, a vertical anchoring force of 0 0.1 newtons is required to hold the deflector in place. Now we got to determine the mass of the deflector. Um, the magnitude of velocity of the air remains con constant, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so first step, um, the knowns, right? Let me go ahead and switch pencils real quick. Um, knowns. So they give us the diameter here. So this is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Um, we should be able to get area of one. That's going to be 0 0.007854 meters squared. Got velocity at one, and that is 30 meters per second. Um, if we multiply these two, we get a flow rate, right? We're dealing with the uh, mass conservation problems. So that's gonna give us 0 0.2356 meters cubed per second. Again, just multiply these two. Um, we're dealing with air, so density of air Right, for rho AV, we need density, so that's gonna be 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. What else? Um, we don't know the area here, or the velocities right at these two points, but because of continuity, we know whatever goes in is equal to whatever comes out. So this problem is perfectly symmetrical. It's hitting right on the dot. So half will go here, half will go here. That doesn't mean that velocity is 15 here and 15 here, right? And it doesn't mean that diameter is 0 0.05 here, 0 0.05 here. Well, it, what it does mean is that Q2 equals Q3, right? Symmetrical. And that value is half of this. So... I hope that makes sense. So the area is not half, the velocity is not half, but the flow rate is. Because whatever comes in equals whatever comes out. And we should be able to, so this velocity, actually I'll tell you right now, 30 is going in and it's the same magnitude here. So this is also 30. So we could get this velocity by using cosine 60, right? You'll see in the free body diagram but you'll get the cosine 60 to get the vertical component of velocity. So this velocity should be the same here because this is also 30 and that's gonna be cosine 60, but you'll see right now. Let's go ahead and do that part. Free body diagram. So we got our cone, right? And overall, we're looking for the mass of this thing. So we know gravity, so we're just gonna do mass times gravity. Um, there's a force of A going down. There's a weight of the cone, right? Um, let's go ahead and do the rest. So it looks something like this. Let's, uh, whatever. I don't know if it comes out too good. Hmm, came out all right. Cool. <clears throat> we know velocity is going this way. We know velocity is going this way. We know velocity is going this way, right? This is point one, two, three just to give some labels. Um, what else do we know? Okay, so in these problems, when you're dealing with like water and stuff, I don't know if you remember right, but um, it's been a while since I did these videos. So there's, um, there's usually pressures at the outlets and the inlets. In this case, because it's atmospheric, right? We're dealing with air and it's open to the atmosphere. There's nothing going on in that sense. So I don't know, I took this class in fall 2018, so I don't remember if this is only the case for air 
or uh, I mean, you just got to look into it, right? Um, I'll let you look into that. But I know for this specific problem right here, since we're open to the atmosphere, we're dealing with air, the pressure here, it's acting all around. So the pressure here is acting, um, it's going here. I don't want to write on it, but it's going down here. It's going towards the control volume every single place. So, I mean, kind of cancels out. Um, what else am I missing? Okay, so we're going to divide this angle right here. So it's perfectly symmetrical. This angle is 30. This angle is 30. Um, our coordinate, right? We're not going to change it. It's going to be X, Y. Nothing's going to go on in the X direction because we, we want to find the weight, right? So we're not going to do the sum of the forces in the X is equal to the linear momentum in the X. Um... Cool, so we can go ahead and keep going, right? Um, let's go ahead and find the velocities. Now, this problem is symmetrical, so you could just do Q1 is equal to 1 Q2, combine both of these. And you can do that, but I'm going to do it the longer way, just so you could kind of... Okay, the thing is, when you add them together, that's only specific to this problem. What I want you to understand is how to solve these problems um, in one um, I mean, process. Does that make sense? Um apply this process to every single problem and you'll be all right that's what i'm trying to say so we'll take a little longer but it's all right so next step is right before okay so our main goal is to find the sum of the forces in this case the y direction right is equal to the sum of the linear momentum in the y direction so in other words you want to find all the forces is equal to all the row a v's v's Right, this is row AV times another V. So row AV, V. So we can't do that if we don't have V here. We don't have the area here. We don't have V here. We don't have the area here. So step three, let's go ahead and find V2 and V3. So V2, V3, in this case, they're identical, right? Because of symmetry, but we don't know that. Let's assume we don't. Um, this is velocity one, and this is the same magnitude of velocity, but we want the y component, so we do cosine 30. We want this one right here. Now, I know you're used to seeing sine 30 for y components, but in this case, you got to be real careful how you analyze this stuff. So this is 30 right here, and then this is, we want the, the y component, which is a cosine 30. So v1 is equal to, co oh, shit. So we got... V1 cosine 30, right? So V2, this velocity here, um, the Y component at least, is equal to V1 cosine 30. Same with this one, V1 cosine 30, right? Because you want, again, the Y component of, of this one. So pretty much the same thing. And again, since this is symmetrical, they should be the same. So that's kind of just something... Uh, um catch on your own but again just follow the process you'll be all right 26 meters per second so i did these calculations right cool so now that we got velocities um we know the flow rate right because it's whatever comes in and whatever comes out I already explained that one so now you can find the flow rates uh the, the areas i'm sorry a2 and a3 so a2 is equal to q2 over v2 right q is equal to a v so if you do that same thing with a3 and again they're the exact same numbers for flow rate and velocity so you'll get the same areas um area of two is equal to 0 0.00453 meters squared. A3 is equal to the same thing. Cool, so we got both areas, both velocities that we didn't know. Now we can go ahead and do the, the equation. So let's see. We got step five. Sum of the forces in the y is equal to the sum of the linear momentum in the y. So in the y, we have 
f of a going down, w going down. Um, and again, they're negative because we assumed going up is positive. So negative f of a minus w. And again, um, you could have assumed the weight going up for whatever reason. Um, this one, they kind of give it to you going down. So that was a no brainer. But even if you assume it the wrong direction, at the end of the day, the negatives will work themselves out. If you get a negative number, that just means you assumed the wrong direction. So don't worry about that. So we got negative FA, right? Minus W. Again, there's no pressure acting. Well, there is, but it's acting all over. So they all cancel out. So we don't have to include that. Equals. Um, let's start with the first one. Always start with no negative or positive yet. We'll see. It works itself out with the velocities. So row A now is A1, right? We're doing A1 first. So it's an entrance. Well, actually, hold on. It's going in the positive Y direction. So it's a positive V1. And then the next V1, it's an entrance. So it's a negative V1. Again, if you saw the other videos, you're good, right? But first, you go along the, your coordinate system. It's going positive, so it's a first positive. And then, since it's an inlet, it's a negative. That's it. Cool. So, plus, row. And they're always pluses in the beginning. Because now, this negative worked itself out. So, that's kind of just the process. Like I said, you'll be fine if you just stick to one simple process. So, A2. Um, it's going in the positive y direction, so it's positive v2, and it is an outlet, so it's a positive v2. And then, plus finally the last one, same thing, it is a positive v3 because it's going in the positive y, and it's an outlet, so it's a positive v3. Cool, we know everything. Um, this is, let's start plugging in, like 0 0.1 minus mg. We know this is gravity, 9.81, so we just gotta find mass, which is what it's asking for. So, and then again, before I go into this equation, I forgot to mention it, everything has to be in meters squared, meters per second, uh, kilograms, no grams, no millimeters. Um, make sure you convert, and that way you won't have to worry about plugging in the right units. Um, so density of air is 1.225, area of 1 is 0 0.007854, I'm going to go ahead and compress these to save on space, V1 is 30, right, so that's negative 900, because 30 times negative 30, negative 900, what else, um, I could have factored out the density in all of them, but I don't like doing that. It confuses me. So let me move it up just in case you can't see. Um, I don't like factoring out stuff. Just I like plugging it the way it is, and then we'll see where it goes. Um, because sometimes, I mean, there's errors in the way you organize it. You try to be um, smart with it, but it's always confused me. I just stick to this, how it's laid out exactly here. So just keep it going. Um, density is 1.2, uh, right, it's air. This is also the same air. A2 is equal to A3. V2 is equal to V3, and they're both positive. So this, um, these two terms, again, they should give you the same number. Why? Because the system is symmetrical. So that just kind of tells you you did something right. Now, so if the system wasn't symmetrical and you got the same numbers here, then you did something wrong, so. Like I said, this is why I just like to stick to this process and things kind of make sense logically. Um, so cool, let's go ahead. I'm just gonna multiply this. Um, no, I'm not gonna. Like I said, I like plugging it the way it is. I was gonna multiply a two just to save on the terms, but I'll do each one separately. Uh, area, just keep plugging in, right? Zero, zero, four, five, three. Uh, V2 squared is 676. And again, the same thing. 0 0.004536, 676. All right, so again, let's keep it going. Zero, and after this is just algebra, so 
Uh, we're looking for M, time MG still. We'll do, this number is gonna give you negative 8.66. And when you multiply these three, 1.225, you'll get a number, multiply that by two, all right? You'll get, because you have two terms, so you'll get 7.5. Um, do more math, you will get negative M. Now let's plug in gravity is equal to negative 1.06. If you do solve for m, the negatives cancel out, you will get 0 0.108 kilograms for the mass. Yep, that's the answer. So fortunately here, we assumed correctly, right? Because we got a positive m. You can have a negative mass. If you do, that just means you assume the wrong direction. You should be cool. So let's say you did get a negative. Um, you'll just probably do it like, let's say you did get negative, right? So 0 0.108 is what you would do on the exam. So if you got a negative, you assume the and that's obviously because you assumed it going up. So you'll put it like this, or, oh, actually, no, you wouldn't, right? Because that's only weight. Um, in this case, yeah, if you get a negative, that just means you assumed wrong. So it kind of like do a little explanation. Negative just means I assumed in the wrong direction, pretty much. Now, believe it or not, that's going to give you some points. I mean, you still got the answer right, so it should give you full credit. But it kind of, you kind of at least tell the professor you know what you're doing. So it's not really like, a, like what the hell did I do? Did it right, but came out right. So just can't explain it. But no, that's pretty much it. Um... This one is a potential exam problem because as an angle, um, I found my old midterm, so I'll show you what I got on my exam. And I messed it up just by not including the damn cosine on one of the, the towards the end. But overall, it was pretty cool. But yeah, that sums up this one.